I have a confession to make. I actually picked this book up over 20 years ago when it first came out, and do you know what my first reaction was? What a baloney. Track my spending? Live below my means? Save and invest for the long run? Then I can become a millionaire? I can't wait that long. I want to become a millionaire now. I need to impress all the ladies today. Well, only if I listen to this invaluable message when it first came out. So in the spirit of no more dumb money mistakes, let me share with you the 10 invaluable lessons from The Automatic Millionaire, a powerful one-step plan to live and finish rich. And hi, if you're new to China, my name is Tay from Financial Tortoise, where we learn to grow our wealth slow and steady. Number one invaluable lesson from The Automatic Millionaire. In order to build wealth, what matters is how much you spend, not how much you earn. Many of us come to believe, whether through socialization or media, that the path to riches is all about making a lot of money. Only if I can make more money, all my problems will get solved. If I have a super high income, I would definitely become a millionaire. However, the truth is very different because it doesn't matter how much we make if we don't control our spending. Thus, if we want to build wealth, we must start with understanding that what matters is not how much we earn, rather how much we spend. How much you earn has almost no bearing on whether or not you can and will build wealth. David Bach gives an example of one of his friends whose income increased from $50,000 to $500,000. That is a big increase. That should be more than enough for him to build wealth, right? However, this friend's lifestyle also increased with his income. He got nicer clothes, nicer cars, and ate only at fancy restaurants. Thus, his savings didn't increase with his income at all. Actually, likely, it went the other way because with an increased lifestyle, he was spending more than he was making. All right then, if we understand that managing our spending is more important than how much we earn, how to do this well? Learn to budget, which leads to the next lesson. Number two, invaluable lesson from the automatic millionaire. Very few people are born to budget. Budgeting is a word that is commonly thrown around in the personal finance world. Whenever we talk about money and managing our spending, we're always told we need a budget. We need a realistic budget for our entertainment, clothing, and food. We need to give every dollar a job before we spend it. Sounds nice, right? Well, David believes that budgeting is a complete waste of time and effort. He compares it to a fitness expert telling someone who wants to lose weight to keep track of every calorie of food they eat and portion out their meals. It sounds nice in theory, but they really work because people get sick of depriving themselves. And David believes it works the same way with financial diet. Budgeting feels like deprivation, and people can't take it anymore after a while. I understand his point, and to a point I agree, but personally, I am a big fan of budgeting. As a previous finance director, I spent a good chunk of my corporate career developing budgets for companies, thus I come to really enjoy the thought exercise. But I also know I'm in the minority. Majority of people, as David Bach mentioned, do not like numbers and spreadsheets, and thus budgeting. All right then, so if you don't like budgeting either, then what? Which leads to the next lesson. But before we get to the next lesson, if you like the book lessons that I'm covering in this video, I highly recommend you check out Shortform. Shortform is a platform that produces really high quality guides to nonfiction books. They have thousands of books within multiple categories like money and finance, self-improvement, and business. I personally like how their guides not only cover the book's key ideas, but include additional commentary as well as other related book recommendations. Whenever I do book reviews like this, I reference Shortform, which helps me to better understand the key takeaways. Shortform is also constantly expanding their library by dropping new book guides and articles every week, and subscribers like you and I even get to vote on which books they should cover next. If you want to get deeper insights about some of your favorite books, like the ones I'm covering here, or discover new books, Shortform is a great companion. So join through my special link, shortform.com slash takehim today, and get a free trial of unlimited access to Shortform, plus an additional 20% discount on the annual subscription. It's not only a great way to learn invaluable lessons from books, but a great way to support this channel as well. All right, with that said, let's get back to the video. Number three invaluable lesson from The Automatic Millionaire. Want to better manage your spending? Start by tracking your spending. The first step to managing our spending is understanding our spending. Where is all of our money going? How much am I spending on what every month? I'm sure we've all had this experience before. You start the month with a certain amount in your bank account or a certain balance on your credit card. And come end of the month, when you check your accounts, you're shocked by how much less money you have in your bank account or how much credit card debt that you racked up. Where did I spend all that money? You see a bunch of transactions and you're shocked because you can't believe how much they add up to. Unfortunately, this is quite common. We all do some level of mental accounting whenever we're at a spending decision, making decisions based on purely mental categories. Oh, this lunch, it's only $20. Oh, this shirt, on sale at $50. What a great deal. DoorDash for $40? Not that much. I'm willing to pay for the convenience. Not able to rationally do the math on how much all these small transactions add up to. Thus, if we want to get ahead of our spending versus reacting to it, it starts with tracking our spending, adding up every dollar we spend and reviewing it on a regular basis. These days, there are tons of great aggregators that can do this for you automatically. Think apps like Rocket Money, Empower, YNAB, Monarch Money. 
Test them out and find the one that works for you. And what tracking will do for you, besides giving you an accurate picture of where your money is going every month, is it will help you find your latte factor. One of the core concepts of this book. Number four invaluable lesson from the automatic millionaire. Find your latte factor. The latte factor is a metaphor for how we dribble away what should be our fortune on small things without ever really giving it much thought. We all throw away too much of our hard-earned money on unnecessary little expenditures without realizing how much they can add up to. It could be a literal latte that you drink, or if you're not a coffee person, some other small expenditure that is leaking out of your pocket. For many, it could be things like eating out, frivolous Amazon purchases, or things related to your hobby. The main message here is that these small expenditures, if we can shore them up, could add up to quite a bit of money. Now, I know there's a lot of argument for and against this latte factor. I've heard some people say that it is stupid. I enjoy my latte, and I will gladly spend my money on it. Now, I've heard some people say it's revolutionary. This latte factor changed my life. The way I look at it, it's all about how you use this information. There are tons of concepts and frameworks out there. Not all will apply to you, but some could. So take what you find useful and feel free to leave the rest. The bottom line is to do an assessment of your spending and see what are some of your lattes. If you really enjoy your lattes like my wife, then look for something else. But if you don't enjoy your latte and you're spending $5 to $10 on it daily, ask yourself the question, why? Number five invaluable lesson from the automatic millionaire. You don't need discipline to become a millionaire. This is another one of David Bach's core concepts from this book. The idea that we shouldn't rely on discipline to build wealth. Rather, automating as much as possible. David talks about his first encounter with whom he calls the automatic millionaire, the McIntyre couple. To him, they were an ordinary couple who didn't make a lot of money in their working career, at most around $50,000 a year. Yet, they were able to amass a net worth of $2 million by the time they reached their 50s. How were they able to do this? This is how Jim, the husband, responded when asked by the author. It's simple and obvious. You take the decision out of your hands. You arrange to have the things you should do happen automatically. They took the decision to save and invest out of their hands. They didn't rely on discipline to sit down once every two weeks to write a check to their retirement accounts. No, they set up their finances so that a portion of their pay would be automatically invested and saved every month. And they kept this process going for many decades. That was the key. It's easy to believe that we need to work harder to build wealth. We need a lot of activities. We need to move money around constantly. But as the McIntyre showed here, you don't need a lot of activities to build wealth. You don't need ridiculous discipline to build wealth. Just a simple automatic system over a long period of time. All right, in the theme of automation, let's get deeper into what we need to automate. Number six invaluable lesson from the automatic millionaire. Pay yourself first. Our parents taught us that to really get ahead of the game, you have to turn this around. Put aside a few dollars for yourself. Then pay all your other bills. What many of us do whenever we get paid is to start out by paying everyone else first. The government, the landlord, the utility company, the credit card company, and so on and so forth. And hoping that we have something left over at the end to save and invest. But if we want to build wealth, we have to flip the formula upside down. Prioritize saving and investing by making it the first thing that happens with your paycheck before you do anything else with your money. Now, if tax is deducted automatically from your paycheck, there's not much you can do besides increasing your 401k contribution. However, with the money that hits your checking account, you are in full control. So if your goal is to save money for a down payment for a home, prioritize this by making it the first thing that happens to your money when it hits your bank account. Automate the transfer into your savings account earmarked for your home down payment. If your goal is to save more for retirement, then prioritize this by making investing the first activity that happens after you receive your paycheck. Automate the investment so a set amount contributes every month as soon as your paycheck hits your bank account. Bottom line, no exaggeration, no hype. If you want to be rich, all you have to do is make a decision to do something that most people don't do, and that's to pay yourself first. A quick reminder before we go on, Make sure to download your free one-page PDF companion guide that goes along with this video. Everything I'm covering here in a simple to digest one-page format. So go to the link I'll have in the description below to grab your free copy. Number seven invaluable lesson from the automatic millionaire. You can still get rich by being an employee. This is one of my personal favorites. Our culture loves to hype up self-employment as the only way to build wealth. They say, just look at all the billionaires. They didn't become a billionaire by working for the man. They went out and carved their own pathway. They started their own Amazon, Tesla, and Google. Now, if your goal is to become a world-famous billionaire, that is probably true. It is really hard to become a billionaire as a salaried employee. However, if your goal is more moderate, like me, enough to fund your lifestyle, that is totally doable as an employee. For me, though I'm self-employed today, I spent a good chunk of my life, almost 20 years as an employee in various roles. And to this day, the majority of my wealth was built while I was working as an employee. So the question is, what is the most common way to do this as an employee? 
Number eight invaluable lesson from the automatic millionaire. Pre-tax retirement plans are where wealth starts. Another one of my very practical and favorite lessons. Again, our culture loves to highlight the sexy latest investments as the only way to build wealth. Hyped up mean stocks, anything related to AI and crypto, triple backward derivative options. But in my book, the very boring pre-tax retirement plans are where wealth really starts. Think super boring 401ks, 403bs, and the IRAs. They don't turn heads at a party, but they're the building blocks to wealth building. For example, let's take a look at all the amazing benefits of a plan like a 401k. One, a 401k plan saves you money in taxes. The 2024 contribution limit is $23,000. This means that if you were to contribute the max $23,000 into your traditional 401k account, you reduce your taxable income by that amount. Two, most companies gives you a match. Additional contribution by your employer on top of your contribution based on a matching percentage. You contribute 4% of your salary, your company will match you dollar for dollar another 4%. This is literally free money. Three, many 401k plans have great investing options. Low cost, broad market index funds. These are one of the best ways to invest in the market. Thus, if you commit to paying yourself first, automatically, every single month into these accounts for the next several years, you'll see your net worth increase and you'll surely be on your path to great wealth. Number nine invaluable lesson from the automatic millionaire. Emergency fund equals good night's sleep. But we can't just focus on growth. We also need to protect our downside. And this is where the emergency fund comes in. David compares having cash in our bank account to meet emergencies to wearing a seatbelt when we get behind the wheel of our car. When you go for a drive, you don't plan to have an accident. Still, you wear your seatbelt because one, someone else could run into you. And two, stuff happens. None of us ever plan on losing our job or stuff happening to us, but things happen and never in the way we expected or at our best time. Thus, what we need is a cushion of cash to help protect us like a good seatbelt. David recommends a range of three months to 24 months, whatever we feel we need to sleep well at night. My wife and I personally like 12 months. To some, it may seem like a lot, but given all the unknown that could happen, our income, the market, political unrest, that amount gives us emotional peace necessary to good night's sleep. Number 10 invaluable lesson from the automatic millionaire. Want to build wealth and keep your wealth? Strive for a debt-free lifestyle. Texans have a way of describing someone who tries to look like more than he or she actually is. Big hat, no cattle. They try to look like a wealthy rancher with their big hat, but the truth is they have no ranch, no cattle, and no money. These days, it's probably a big car rather than a big hat, but you get the picture. And what funds these individuals' big hats and big cars is debt. If you have a credit card with a decent limit and access to lenient car loan and home loan, you can look like anyone you want to today. Flash clothes, high-end cars, luxury homes, all within arm's reach if you're willing to get enough debt. They look rich on surface, and our society rewards them with attention, but it's all built in a house of cards that can come crashing down in a moment's notice. Now, it may be hard to completely avoid all debt, because in some places, it is hard to buy a home without a mortgage. But that doesn't mean we should be friends with them. In the long run, aspire for a debt-free lifestyle. Thank you guys for watching in the line of automation. If you want to learn to simplify how you manage and invest your money, please check out my video here. Until next time, all the best.